Hello, so a big thank you to Max Johnson. He's been sort of subscribed and supported the channel for quite a while, and he sent me a load of US CDV pens. Now, I previously, I think, I had four or six CDV 742 pens, but they're the sort of boring ones, because they're the ones that do zero to 200 Ronken per hour, um, which is pretty standard with lots of those sort of old sort of decimeter pens. Don't get me wrong, they're called decimeter pens, but they did other pens in the um, CDV range that never seemed to turn up for sale in the UK and quite often they're very expensive from US sellers so obviously he's got a load recently and he sent me what's either a complete range or you know a good variety of them so he sent me another CDV 742 so that's that one and the CDV 742 I'm going to try and show these on the camera in a minute but I might not you know be succeed this is the one that does 0 to 200 Röntgen so that's the um, sort of one most people are familiar with there's also the CDV 730 and this one does 0 to 20 Röntgen, so it's a lot more sensitive, because obviously it has a tenth of the range, but that means that you'll notice smaller increases in the radiation dose. So that, yeah, that's 0 to 200 Röntgen, oh sorry, 0 to 20 Röntgen. And then there is also the CDV740, which is 0 to 100 Röntgen, and that's got a really nice sort of clear display on that one. But the best one of all, uh, because I've been playing about with it today and it's fascinating, is the CDV, uh, sorry, so yeah, CDV138. And the reason this one is brilliant is it's in milli -rongans. So you can actually observe it going up almost in real time. So this currently is on about 85 to 90 milli -rongans per hour. I reset this. Interestingly, when I received it, although he said it does have a bit of drift in it over time, like most of these pens do, um, it had obviously received some, I think it was something like 40 odd milli -rongans from the flight over from America, being at higher altitude, obviously absorbing more cosmic rays, ionising radiation that way. And obviously if it went through any x-rays and machines and that, receiving sort of x-rays or gamma radiation that way. So pretty fascinating. So I reset it. Um, I didn't reset it using this, I reset it using my British equivalent, just because it's from a bit later in the Cold War, so it's a bit chunkier and easier to use. But you know, they all work the same way, these things. So I reset it to zero. Put it next to some radium for a bit, um, the scale from the DP63 guide counter, and yet yeah, it's gone up from 0 to 85 milli Röntgens in a couple of hours, so that's pretty cool. So let me get a torch and see if it's possible to actually show you what this looks like on camera. So if I put that there and put that there, you might be able to see it, but also might not. I don't want to, I really don't want to scratch the camera lens because this is my, you know, expensive camera. Um, is that the right way? Again, these are very awkward to film, um, these decimeter pens. Just because you have to get the light and the angle just right for it to show up on the camera. But hopefully you can see there's a scale there. But yeah, what I'll try and demonstrate, and again, this might not be a sensible idea because it's close to my eyes, is if I look through this at a light source, while putting my check source up to it, like so, I wonder if I can see the needle actually drift. It might be a bit too slow for that, because it, you know, if this is something that I think gives off um, close to basically maybe 100 microsieverts an hour from gamma um, and close to basically a couple of millisieverts I think combined gamma beta um, and obviously I've got this sealed up so it doesn't contaminate anything uh, it's not going to be as visible I'll try it with a bit of strontium 90 as well just in case that it's more visible, but again, if they only do so much per hour, you're not necessarily going to get, um, you know, a massive thing sort of visible per, you know, almost second or whatever. So let's just break that around. Obviously have to see where this goes up closest to the actual ionisation chamber inside, because I actually don't know which bit the ionisation chamber would be in, some of them they're about halfway up, others they're about sort of you know right near the bottom. But it definitely works because I've been putting it near check sources, leaving it and it's going up. But yeah, so I'm saying I can't really demonstrate it in real time, but what is lovely about this one, and I'll just hold it up just in case the camera does I want to look into it a little bit, this camera is actually pretty good for showing them compared to some. Yeah, you, know, you might be able to see it there. That um, you know, because it lets in a lot of light. This big camera lens, you can actually sort of see it just holding it like that. But yeah, that's 
Um, like I said, you can see this one's actually in the Millie Ronkin range. So yeah, all of these are pretty fascinating, but this is by far the most useful for most people. The reason being, it would basically be the one to alert you if you were exposed to actual radiation you could normally measure. The others, remember, were designed for basically Cold War disaster scenarios, as in nuclear bombs going off and you're exposed to fallout, or there's been like a reactor accident. The Milli Ronkin ones are much better if you might have one on you and you're given an x-ray, for example, and then it'll be measurable. Um, because this is one that each day you'll probably notice a little bit of it drift, well, as we said, they drift anyway, due to sort of how these work. I'll give a very quick explanation of that in a minute. Um, you know, this one is pretty cool. Now, obviously, bear in mind that these sort of things, um, you know, are nowhere near as good and as accurate as the modern sort of battery-powered dosimeters that, you know, you can have sitting in a pocket, because these were basically designed, you got that, you basically did that with it, either on the inside or outside of a pocket, and, you know, you have it basically secured there, and the idea is that as, it, as radiation hits you, it's taking a similar dose to what you're taking, so it gives you a pretty good idea of how, you know, how dangerously or not dangerously you've been contaminated, and hopefully you notice sooner rather than later and you can get out of there. So they're, they're pretty good in that regard. But how these work is basically, and again, not all of them might not be exactly the same, but the principle's pretty similar. They have a capacitor in there, which is basically like, a, if you're not into electronics, it's basically a bit like a battery. It's a bit of an electrical circuit that holds charge. When you charge these, it moves a little quartz fibre inside, um, that's basically the needle on it, to the zero position. So when it's fully charged, it's at zero, or just to the left of zero. No dose. Now, it works basically the opposite of a regular battery. So if you think a regular battery, when it's fully charged, it's 100%. With these, it's essentially 0%. As your radiation dose increases, um, and the battery discharge, the numbers go up. So if you had a 0 to 100 Ronken one, let's say, each 1% of the battery moving would be 1 Ronken. Um, but, yeah, again, they use a little ionisation chamber inside that's very clever. Um, some are more sensitive than others, you know, to different ranges of radiation. Um, but, you know, the idea is with the, basically, that the ionisation chamber can, connected to the capacitor, once it's fully charged, when radiation, ionising radiation hits it, the absorbed dose is sort of minus from the battery to move the quartz fibre. Some of these old ones aren't that reliable, because when I bought kits of old dosimeter pens before, some will basically refuse to charge completely where the capacitor's gone or something else is broken inside. Others might discharge far too quickly. I've noticed some that don't seem to move at all when exposed to radiation, as in maybe there's a fault with the ionisation chamber, but they are pretty cool things. And I think if you're in America and you can find the CDV, for example, Y138 cheaply, you'd probably find it's actually quite a useful piece of gear because sometimes you can get dosimeter pens and the chargers very, very cheaply. And assuming you get them that work, they're far, far cheaper than the Geiger counter or anything like that for the, um, you know, equivalent of buying something else. And there's a lot less that can go wrong with one of these compared to an old CDV sort of, you know, 700 Geiger counter or 715 ionization chamber. And yeah, this one will basically definitely tell you um, if you checked it every couple of hours and it wasn't drifting too much, if there's a problem with the radiation in your area. You can also use this to work out the um, rate of radiation. So, say you had this on you and you knew it was zero, you were in an area of, um, you know, might be radiation there. Obviously, if you knew there was radiation there, you probably wouldn't be there, but let's say you knew it was going to be an area of radiation, or you put it down on the surface an area you thought might be irradiated, and it was at zero. You came back an hour later and it was at 20 milli Ronken. You know that it was 20 milli Ronken per hour you know, if it was exactly one hour of exposure. So you can use them to judge that then, but you'd need to be, you know, knowing the intervals of when you were checking it. But the idea is generally you look up to the light and say, yes, I've been exposed to however many, you know, things. Let me just see with this camera before I end the video. If I put that to look up at the light, it's probably not going to look vertically enough, is it? There's a bit of light. Let's just see compared to the torch if I can get that to show up better. It's probably going to be even more awkward at this angle, actually. Yeah, I think it's not going to be steep enough. So I said, unfortunately, these are pretty hard to demonstrate on video, uh, these dosimeter pens. I think the best way people have managed to sometimes show these on video is to basically build a little stand for them with a light under it, so you can always get the camera completely where it's meant to go. But as I said, this camera isn't too bad with its low light amplification for actually seeing in them. 
as I said, the problem is if I put a light there, it would be over blinding, but I think you can see the needles roughly in the middle there. So, yep, just, just to re sort of read the numbers out. So, CDV138. This is the 0 to 200 milli Rontgen per hour one. Then you've got the CDV. Uh, I'd assume they went up in numerical order, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, so the CDV730, that's the 0 to 20 Rontgen one. CDV740, 0 to 100 Rontgens. And the CDV742, the one most people are familiar with, because it was the most issued one, 0 to 200 Rontgen. Um, there can be different manufacturers of these, I believe, although nearly all of them say Bendix on. I believe there's different things, or maybe it might be of the optics when you look inside them with different sort of manufacturing names. Um, you'll sometimes find, like, this particular one I've been sent for the CDV742 has, like, the oval-shaped sort of window, rather than it being the um, round one. But with different, with the similar pens in the past, I found some have been rectangular windows, some have been circle windows. In general, I find the circle windows let the most light through, so they're the easiest to read. Um, so I think it was this um, 730 that's actually the easiest one out of all of them to read. Um, I think because this one that lets the most light in. I don't know if that's going to be apparent on the camera there. Probably not, but... Um this is definitely the easiest one to read out a lot. Anyway, big thank you again to Max for sending me these and supporting the channel because I'm actually going to have a lot of fun of that um, uh, 200 milli Rontgen one just because of the fact I can charge it and leave it places and see if it goes up because previously the lowest um, sort of range decimeter pen I had I think was one that measured in millisieverts um, because one millisievert is basically about 100 milli Rontgen. So that was the only one previously you could leave it next to a really strong source for several hours and actually see it had moved. Whereas, you know, most of them, if they're the ones that are like in Rontgens or center grays or, you know, sieverts or whatever, they're the ones where basically you'd have to leave it there for days to see it had moved and then you still didn't know had that just discharged due to the battery emit. But yeah, a big thank you to him for sending me these and they are cool old things. But as said, the most common one, unfortunately, is kind of the most useless one for everyday use. The one you probably want to get is the, um, as said, just to read out the number again, the CDV138, simply because of the reason it's in radiation ranges that you're more likely to experience, as opposed to, you know, oh, I'm exposed to fallout, I'm going to be dead in two hours, sort of ranges of radiation.